Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We are a YouTube channel dedicated to all things smartwatch and we are on the web at smartwatch.com. I'm showing you Vision today. You got it. This is the Cospet Vision unboxing and a look at what it can do. So where can you get this watch? Huh? The Cospet Vision 1.6 inch screen and no flat tire guys. Crystal clear display, 3 gigabytes RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and two 5 megapixel cameras, a front facing and a side camera, is available from Banggood. Yep, check the show notes down below for a, a, a buying link for it as well. A little bit more about the specs before we move on. It's got a video call, an 800 milliamp hour battery supposedly in it, nice leather strap, and running Android 711. Um, using the Y Watch 2 as the tethering app, as all of these do. Here's the hardware information, stuff about the networks. Uh, it is a 4G watch with a separate SIM card. It has the Corning Gorilla Glass on this one. Five to seven days standby, usage time two to three days. And before the end of this review, you're going to have uh, information on the actual battery life. Yay! Mr. Tix finally did a, a study on that. All right, some more of the features and dimensions and whatnot. Got a little bedtime story for you as we begin the unboxing. Long time ago, like the beginning of 2019, now that these years feel like decades, <laughs> we had uh, an, a really interesting uh, United States American pilot who is working over in Shenzhen, China, and interested in smartwatches to... Um, get going with designing what he considered his favorite smartwatch. We'll talk about that in a second, but first let me show you. We have dual cameras on here. This is a red highlight on the button. We have two buttons. We have a camera here in the front as well and red highlight all around the edge. It's kind of a thick barrel look on this one with a uh, integrated strap that is not removable and red stitching in the strap itself. A SIM card cover, charging port, and a heart rate uh, monitor sensor area. There are four very unique screws in here. You need a specialized screwdriver to remove them, which you really shouldn't do because it uh, could affect um, the innards of this thing. And it's got a TPU rippled effect here on the back of the band supposedly to help you with sweating and um, keeping your skin nice and dry. This is the red highlight version of the Cospet Vision and here is the same thing with blue. It has light blue highlights around the button and the bezel and the stitching is black so you have these two different options that are available in the black. Now, see what else is in the box as we continue our story. So Jason, our U.S. pilot, decided he wanted to create his own stop, his own watch, a smartwatch, not a stopwatch, with two cameras in it, a forward-facing one and one for landscape. And he did all that, and it resulted in a watch that uh, he released, and we've reviewed that one here, called the Janus. I'll show you that in a second, because we're going to show some differences. Inside this box, I have not one, but two chargers. They use the four-pin connector, and just to pull it out and show you, it's magnetic, connects, and is not strong enough to hold the watch, but the watch is really heavy. Uh, so it it's adequate for uh, charging, uh, let's put it that way. Just be careful when you set it down to charge, you don't accidentally push on it because it can cause it to flip over a little bit and come loose. But we got two of those chargers. We've got the uh, optional screen protector. If you like that concept, you can put a screen protector on the front of it. You notice the bezel comes right up to the edge here. The glass is, is even with the bezel. Makes it easy for swiping across the screen, I've found. And then we've got a user's manual, an empty box. There's nothing in that one. And sometimes they put a screwdriver, but we don't need that because our SIM cover can come up just by pushing underneath here and raising it. 
And the vision cost pet manual is right here in English. We'll run through that for you. And I'll continue with the story. So Jason created this uh, watch uh, called the Janus. Had a 600 milliamp hour battery and two uh, cameras in it, like you see. And he started selling that. And we reviewed it here. Well, it turns out it was a hot product. And another company called Lockmat um, decided that they wanted to offer it as well. They did a little bump up in the battery from 600 to 800 milliamp hours, uh, kept the cameras the same, everything else the same, and released it on the market as well. And we've reviewed that one. Well, along comes Cospet. They liked it as well. They picked up the overall basic design, but changed the case. Supposedly an 800 milliamp hour battery in here as well. And I say supposedly on the battery, because later I'm going to show you some information that makes you go, hmm, exactly. Um, and they've released it as the Vision. So the Vision we're looking at here originated as a Vision by a pilot from the U.S. stationed over in... Uh, in Shenzhen, China, and um, created the old, I call it, or original Janus. This is the first one that he released, and it's pretty much identical. Front-facing camera, side cameras, buttons. You notice the case has got a little bit more definition to it in how it's laid out. Rectangular window. Uh, this has got a couple of little bumps there, um, and it's got a tapered bezel coming up to the glass right here, whereas this one's flat. And we're pretty sure that's why you can get an 800 milliamp hour battery in this new one, and it's a little bit less space over here. So they had to straighten out these corners and adjust a little bit to get the, um, the battery to fit. Then came along the, uh, the upgrade, the newer version of the Janus, and you see its case is a little bit thicker right here. See that little extra space to put the 800 milliamp hour battery, but a slight taper. And the Cospet one uh, eliminated that completely. It just comes up to a rectangular edge right there. So depending on which style you like, they're basically identical 99% of the way. Um, it's the one that you might be interested in. So in addition to the Janus, the original and the newer one, then I mentioned the Lockmat came out with the X360 and supposedly 800 milliamp battery, but exactly the same design as the old one. And these two measure identical all across the board. So my guess is it may be in a bit of a fudge on calling this one a bigger battery because I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same release as the original Janus. All right, you got the history, we've got the watch. Let's uh, turn it on and run it through its paces. So we're booting up now on the Cospet Vision. We had the first screen was the uh, big white screen with the word Cospet faded into Android. And now we're settling down to our home screens, the different watch faces. Um, here we go. On the top, you got these pages here, okay? And when you scroll up, you've got your step count stuff. Now, it may seem like I'm going pretty fast through this, and I am, because this is identical to the implementation of Android 7.1.1 on pretty much every watch. However, looking at Google Analytics, by the way, these three, the um, contacts, phone, and messaging are for phone calling related to a SIM card. None of the Android 7 watches have that Bluetooth calling where you can connect to your phone and, and make and receive phone calls that come into your phone and talk you know, on your watch. That just doesn't happen in the newer Android. Uh, but that does happen here for the SIM card. When I look over the analytics, it turns out that 9 out of 10 of you watching this right now have not seen any of these before, which is why I tend to belabor the point and go into each and every one of these apps. But for the one of you that's watching that sees these over and over again, you get pretty bored at looking at the same thing every time I review a watch. So I'm trying something today, since the Vision is identical to the X360, basically, and the Janus. I'm just going to show you these apps and say, go on over and look at one of those other uh, videos if you're interested in this watch and want to see what the stock apps do and how they look and how they work. 
because they're all over there. And I'm just showing them to you here. Voice search, Play Store, Maps, it's all part of it. Assistant is not the um, Google Assistant. This is an assistant for when you're tethered to your phone um, that you can um, use it as a remote capture and all of these things here. Now, there is a difference on this. System optimization is something new. And then there's the original App Store, um, which is not the Google Play Store, but an App Store that lets you download things like Facebook and Twitter, WhatsApp and YouTube without having to go into the Google Play Store. Now, this other stuff, these are custom ones that I've put in that I'm using to test out the watch, and you'll see that later on. But let's talk about system optimization. When we go in here, he says, there we go. You can clean tasks. You can do a third party app adapter, have system work mode and app freeze control. Now, these are all new features overlays to the Android 711 uh, that are starting to show up on some of these watches. And the fact they're now in their own separate app is pretty cool. I'm going to show you in just a minute when we go back to settings that you'll find all these there as well. The clean task thing is a different one than the one you saw at the top where you just touch that little clean up. This one has to do with battery saving and it's going to enable um, you to have the apps that are running in the background shut down so they're not uh, occupying a lot of uh, battery drain for you. Third-party app adapter is a special thing that lets you see more of the third-party apps on the screen. Now, we all know, right, that if you press and hold the top button, you come up to your shutdown screen, which is where you can look at your recent tasks, go into a power save mode directly there, touch that thing, which will make your third-party apps show up in a square instead of filling the full circle. And that's what we've done before for showing more of the app. But this is different. This is like if you have a browser screen up here or a game or something, and some of it is slopped off of the edge just because the font rendering isn't right. Turning that on helps these third-party apps show more. It kind of reduces them and gets them to work on the screen. I only use it if I need to, and it's not often that I need to. Now, this is a big one, and um, we're going to come back to that after I talk about app freeze, okay, this doesn't mean putting your watch in the freezer when it gets too hot on your arm. It's about the apps. And again, a frozen app is going to be hidden and not running in the background. And um, it's going to basically uh, put it into a frozen or suspended animation kind of a mode. And you can freeze and defreeze specific apps. If you go to next, you'll get the list of apps and you can go through and do all of that kind of stuff. These are the portfolio of apps that I've got installed as um, additional apps from the Google Play Store or sideloaded from my hard drive. So system work mode. We saw this earlier on a watch and it's now starting to show up on a lot of them. This is a big difference between this version of the Janus and X360, the Vision. It's, it's got this capability and the others do not. So if you're looking for something to discriminate on which one you would buy, for whether it's price or slight change in the body, this could be one of the factors. We have normal mode and performance. Now, when you select performance mode and say OK, it's going to tell you that the thing may get kind of hot. It's good for playing games and watching videos, but the watch may get warm. And that's kind of a forewarning that you may not get the performance boost you're expecting because when it gets hot, it also slows it down because inside the circuitry will uh, dumb down the clock rate to make sure the battery doesn't overheat. So it's a dance that you're going to have to learn based on your own usage patterns with the watch. It also is going to drain down the battery for you. So I tend to run in normal switching back is okay. So those are all new in a special thing called system optimization. If I go back up here to settings. Now, you new folks that are just wanting to see what the apps do and stuff. I know I'm way too deep for you right now. Um, but integrate this with what you see in the basic stuff on the uh, other reviews of the similar watches and you'll have a full picture. 
So we've got all of this kind of stuff that we've seen before. And again, this is covered in those other reviews until you get down here to more. And when I go into more, this is where we get all that stuff. You got your Google accounts and stuff and Google Play services, the background cleaner, third party app adapter, system work mode and app freeze. There they all are. And these are exactly the same uh, things we just saw. Then you got access to uh, your storage. It shows you how much internal storage you've got and your overall RAM and how much you're using. And again, we've seen all that stuff too. Overall app settings and data saver. So um, this is all part of the overall settings and we usually do this just so you can check your watch when you get it and look at the version. It's the Cospet Vision, Android 7.1.1. And then the kernel and build number, those dates that are buried in here, tell you the most uh, recent revision to the operating system, the firmware in here. And if you want to check to make sure there's an update, and you really should, after you connect to Wi-Fi, make sure you go in to settings to about this watch and touch on wireless update. And it'll go out there, hit the network, check and see if there's a new update waiting for you. It'll download it. Otherwise, it'll say it's the latest version and you can bail out of that. You could do that periodically because it typically doesn't uh, give you a warning and notice that you have a new version waiting. In terms of installed watch faces on the Vision, you've got these. And I guess a lot of you guys by now are seeing that there's a little black bar at the bottom. That's a flat tire, they call it. And it's uh, indicative of the actual screen technology. It's on all of these watches that we just uh, talked about and showed you. Uh, but they've done a nice job of giving you some selection of watch faces that make it mm, kind of disappear. It's not as obvious. Um, this one's going to definitely show up there. But it kind of makes this whole thing look like a white stripe, right? So eh, it's, it's a real showstopper for some folks. For so others uh, like me, I get used to it. Um, I don't see it after a while unless somebody says, hey, what's wrong with your watch? Now, this would be really bad if the six were cut in half, but it's not. So it works. Yeah, I know. It doesn't really work. All right. <laughs> but if you can live with it, um, that's okay. If you can't, then this is not the watch for you, and you can move along. These are pretty much the stock uh, watch faces in the Vision. Um, and then I get into some um, specialized faces that I've put in here too. And, oh no, we still got the stock ones. Okay, this is a weird one. I really have trouble understanding this one. And to me, it looks like 1189 or something. I don't know. Um, not happy with that face. And here's another stock face too. Some of these are in the other watches. And of course, some of them are uh, unique just to the cost bet. And that's one of the things that the different companies do is um, seed the uh, stock watch faces with uh, some specialized ones. Now, these um, all here are some, some ones that Alrod is working on. They're gonna be active touch buttons, uh, but we're not ready to pro, uh, premiere those yet. And this is one that you've seen in a lot of the earlier watches that had an always on mode. Now, this does not have that. When it's off, it's off. Uh, and when it's on, it's on. And it does have the twist your wrist. It just lit up because I have that feature on there. But when it's off, it's black, okay? It's not um, a feature that has that always on screen. But some of the other Android 7 watches do have always time, they call it. And this particular face without the um, battery level, I think, is what shows up on the screen. And you're able to see the time no matter what, uh, which is kind of nice, but not happening with this particular watch. So you've seen the watch faces, you've seen the layout of everything. This is weather. If we update that, it'll show you the weather in your area. Music player, that's the clean I was talking about. It just kind of does a quick cleanup. All of your functions here and your overall uh, battery level and information there. So let's look a little bit more deeply. That's the review, guys. Now this is for the rest of you that want to learn. Um, let's look a little more deeply at what's going on with this battery stuff because I've done some extensive testing for you. So one of the differences supposedly between these watches is the battery size. These two most likely have 600 milliamp. These three should have 800 milliamp. And that means there should be a big difference in the battery drain. 
So I've done a couple of battery tests for you. I got five watches, original, new Janus, the uh, Lockmat X360, and two identical Cospet Visions, one from Cospet, one from Banggood. Thanks, Banggood. Um, let's talk about this. I've got it in a, a Koi Pond display to actively run uh, the watch. They're in infinite time, which you can get to through floating toucher when you've got the dot on here, or 30 minute timeout for these. Um, and I did a, a full test with the maximum load, the brightest screen, uh, where's my data here? Let's see. All of that was done with the, the, the intention of seeing how long would it last at worst when you really are using it continuously with the screen always on. Again, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, these are the, the watches themselves. And here are my test results. This is the maximum time, the delta time. It started at 1 p.m. I took a reading at 4 p.m. thinking, okay, it's been a few hours. Well, look at this. The Janus went from 100 down to 2%. That's a 600 milliamp hour on that one. The Janus new one with an 800 milliamp hour battery was even worse. It went all the way down to 1%. I mean, both of them basically drained the same. Then the Lockmat. Uh, X360, which is supposedly six or 800, we're not sure, got a question mark. They advertised it as eight, but we looked at the casing and it's the same size. I don't know. Six or eight, it lasted to 11% in that same test. These two now, supposedly with 800 milliamp hour batteries under full stress, 23% left and uh, 28%. So it does look like there's about a 20% longer life in the Cospet Vision watches over the original uh, versions that may all have 600 milliamp hour batteries. But this is where it gets odd. I'm gonna to go to a different test that I did where I turned all of this stuff off. I set the whole thing down to a minimum of like 15 seconds. I only checked it Come out of here. When, uh, yes, we want to exit. Okay, thank you. When uh, we, we only tested it just to check the times, 15 seconds, turned off everything, went down to the lowest uh, reading there, turned off all the radios, no, no uh, location data. By the way, in the hardcore test, everything was on Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, um, location services, everything that could be on was on. And that's what we got, believe it or not, like three hours, right? Three hours, maybe three and a half hours, maximum time out of all of them. But it's a lot better if you use it in a, in a standby mode. And that's what I'm about to show you here. This would be your best case when you're just basically using it as a watch. That's about it with nothing else on, no radios, no stressing it whatsoever. And here is the data. Once again, we're looking at one and two is the Janus, the lock mat number three, and the two visions. So they're across the top. Here's when it started. Here is the elapsed time. So obviously after an hour, it just dropped a couple of percent. Eight hours, 11 hours, it was looking like this. Then the next day, dropping it down to three days, right? 12, 24, 36, 36 hours is three days later. I'm at about half, except for this one. This is the... Uh, Banggood provided, if I got these backwards, I do, sorry. This is the, um, yeah, the Banggood provided one with the red one uh, dropped down to 20% for some reason. Overheating, I'm not sure. But look at look at how the numbers fell. Uh, this was the one directly from Cospet. Uh, and I, they're supposedly identical, so I don't know how much, might be just luck of the draw. It dropped down to 40%. By the time we got the next morning at 45 hours, this one was dead and dead from then on. But the other ones were holding out. And when you look at this, the original Janus with a 600 milliamp hour battery and the lock mat, which is probably the same, are at 38%, almost 40%, while the hottest, newest ones with the best battery have dropped down to 20%, half of that, or all the way out to zero. What's going on? Bigger batteries, less time. Lower batteries, better time. And I haven't shown it here, but I have in the other videos. These two have a screaming uh, Antutu 
score in the 30,000s. All of these three are in the 20,000s. So these two, the original uh, Janus and the X360, have much faster N22 scores, which should mean higher battery usage. Yet, look at this. After 56 hours, after... 60 hours, I still had 10% on the original one and 13% here. This one, the new Janus, had dropped down to two, so it, it's good for 60 hours, and these guys are long gone, long gone. Uh, 56 hours, it was just about to die on this one. So the battery tests are still leaving us confused. I don't understand it. It looks like it's better to have a 600 milliamp hour battery if you're going to use it lightly to moderately but if you're going to load it down to capacity, you're going to squeeze an extra 20% out of it by having the bigger battery. That's all I can make out of it so far. So that's the battery test results. Now, finally, let's recap the N22 scores. And once again, the N22 app is an extensive app that tests all different aspects of these different watches and phones. And these are the results that we're getting. In the original Janus, 35,500 roughly, 36,500, 1,000 more in the X360. Both of these are screaming faster than the upgraded new Janus with the 800 milliamp hour battery. That has 600, remember? This one may be 6 or 8, but it looks like it's 6 because the case designs are identical but they promote it as being 800, but there's no way we've been able to tell for sure. Anyway, we know this is 800. These are supposedly 800, and look at them all. 21.6, 21.7, 21.7. All three come in identical with a bigger battery and lower N22 scores than these two. Does that mean it's actually better to have a smaller battery in these? It might. Honestly, it might because the battery being matched to the processor and the case and everything else could feasibly result in overall better performance. Why would these be significantly lower? No idea. Heating of the battery? Um, if any of you guys know, please have a discussion about it down in the comments, because it doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't see any differences in the setups. They all are running the same operating system and pretty much the same firmware with the exception of these two that have some of that new advanced stuff that's inhibiting the ability to have the floating toucher dot on the main screen uh, and um, suppressing the overlay capability. But other than that, they seem to be identical. So which one should you choose? Well, <laughs> I don't know. If you want a front-facing camera and side-facing camera, these are the choices out here. There is the older, smaller Thor 4 Dual, and there's a brand new Cospet one coming up called the Prime that is going to have two cameras, both on the side, one forward and one out to the side. And yeah, Jason is working on uh, his own modification and update to this as well. So we're looking forward to yet another dual camera kind of a watch coming out soon. Overall, great watch. The bands are pretty much similar. This has got a little bit more color to it, if you like that kind of an idea. The backs are pretty much the same in these three and slightly shifted in the new uh, Cospet one. The case has been redesigned in the uh, Vision from what it has been in the Lockmat and uh, the Janus, which are identical here except slightly changed here in a thicker bezel. And we went over that when we talked about the battery. All right, you have been watching Smartwatch Ticks, and here's how you can get yourself one of these if you're interested. Banggood, of course. Our good folks over at Banggood have sent out a Cospet Vision, and uh, Cospet themselves is supporting us as well, getting all of this stuff going. So uh, shout out to both Cospet, the company, and Banggood, the retailer that's selling these. Check the show notes down below for a buying link. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. So you want to see a little something that just came in from Dubai? I'm serious. This is the actual shipping label from United Arab Emirates by way of Bahrain, then Germany, 
then East Midlands, UK, over to Cincinnati in the United States, on to Los Angeles, and into my hot little hands right here. They package things differently over there. I mean, way differently with all kinds of stuff. This is, well, it's the next watch or the one after that, but I will be reviewing it soon. Just wanted you guys to take a quick look and see if it looks at all familiar. Hmm.